the coolest thing that I have ever manifested besides my beautiful, amazing, healthy relationship with my gorgeous girlfriend is a free car. That sounds really great, right? But you actually pay with your energy no matter what. That is the moral of today's story along with me learning to manifest exactly you know how to manifest and how to be open to getting my manifestation even if the way that I get it is very unorthodox. (laughs) Shout out to the universe for this story that I get to share about my crazy way that I went about manifesting a free car. Welcome back to Cosmosis or whatever. I'm Salia, Salia Marie 1243, your host and your guide on your journey of healing and self discovery. I am a spirit guide whisperer, I am a shadow work slayer, I am a tarot card slanger, <laughs> and all of those things help me tap into my best self. Um, So I'm teaching y'all how to do that too. I speak to spirit guides for a living. I help y'all tap into your shadow work, see what unconscious things are kind of blocking you, help you clear them, understand them. Um, I read tarot. I am a psychic. I tap into your energy and read y'all for filth. (laughs) And we talk about all things that here on this podcast. Um, A hot topic with the girls lately, though, has been, and it probably always will be a hot topic because I think it beguiles, ooh, beguiles a lot of people. Um, It's kind of mysterious, but it doesn't always have to be. And that topic is manifestation. So manifestation on a basic level is just turning an idea into reality you know, figuring out what it is that you want and bringing that into existence. Once you have the thing that you want, you've brought into existence, you have manifested it. And, you know, haters are going to hate just like anything, especially popular things. And manifestation is popular. Um, People say it doesn't work. But as somebody who has been manifesting for before I even knew what manifesting was, it does work. Um, I can vouch there is science behind it. It is not all, believe it or not, (laughs) even though you're here on Cosmosis or whatever, it's not all just rainbows and butterflies and stuff. It requires action. There is science behind it. There are rules and laws of things that um, you need to kind of do to align yourself to your manifestations. But you can basically manifest anything. We're manifesting things all the time, actually. But a lot of times people are using manifestation to manifest those bigger things. Cars, houses, large sums of money. And the coolest thing that I have ever manifested was a car. And I manifested that for free. Completely free. Now, free is a funny word. (laughs) right but there's the but free is a funny word because when we use the word free a lot of times we are referring to the fact that we did not have to pay any money cash money for our thing whatever it is that we have we didn't have to pay money for it but keep in mind that energy exists everywhere money is actually even just energy right the whole world the whole universe is made up of energy and energy exchanges it does not um you know die or it's not created it just recycles itself um so if you're not paying with money or even if you are you're also probably paying with your energy and when i manifested this free car last year baby let me tell you (laughs) that I paid with my energy because I did not pay a dime for it. But there was just a lot of energy, we'll say, that came with it. So I'm excited to get into our little story time. Manifestation has been something that's been popping up a lot lately. If you guys hear me sipping... I don't know if you can hear that. I am sipping on my Starburst water. I posted about it on um, Lemon 8, the new app um, that TikTok made, which I actually love, by the way, but this isn't about that. Um, nor is this sponsored by Lemon 8 or 
the Starburst water, but I will just say, as a very thirsty girl who tends to be di di dehydrated often, this water has made me drink, or this little like juice, it's not juice, it's technically water. It doesn't have um, like sugar or anything. It's probably still juice, actually. But it has helped me increase my sugar, my sugar intake. It does, I just said it doesn't have sugar. It has helped me increase my water intake. So I highly recommend. Um, check that out on Lemonade um, if you guys don't already know what it is. But yeah, manifestation has been a hot topic. I think we're probably even for this months or next month for june's full moon you know we meditate every single full moon um i curate all the meditations myself we do group guided meditations takes off some of the pressure you don't have to think about oh well what do i manifest or um <laughs> what do i manifest yeah i think that was confirmation what do i meditate about this full moon what i do that all of that work for you so you just show up to the meditation with your tools and so this uh, next one coming up is June 3rd, and we are going to be doing manifestation. I haven't quite got into how, but I always love to kind of craft experiences for you guys. Meditation doesn't have to be boring, and I'm actually going to start sharing some shorter meditations here on the podcast, but if you want the long, good stuff, not long, but you know, if you want the intense meditations meet your spirit guides stuff like that definitely join patreon or join us for one of our full moon um meditations um we do those as groups on uh youtube and you guys can sign up always at the link in my bio on my website um but patreon is probably your best bet because as a top tier patron you get access to all the meditations that we've ever done i've been doing meditations for like two years now which is crazy because i'll mention that in the story time um i actually manifested stuff that goes along with the meditation so it's crazy to just kind of look back at all of this but i'm interested um i'm excited <laughs> my throat chakra been crazy lately honestly has anybody else's throat chakra been just like you're saying words and you are like saying things that you don't necessarily mean or you can't think of the word that you're trying to say that has been happening to me a lot lately i have to figure out what's going on with my throat chakra what's been blocking it but <laughs> sipping <laughs> sipping starburst juice um yeah so i'm gonna tell you guys this story time about how i manifested this car for free but i paid for it in energy how i did it and what came with it okay so i hope you have your snacks get your water get your snacks for this story time so this starts back in 2021 um i'm actually looking at my literal diary slash journal um that i was using back then and in it i have my manifestations um i would keep track of a bunch of different stuff in my journal my man not i just lost the page i kept track of you know manifestations i would keep track of things that happened on the full moon i would keep track of my shadow work like all of that i put into my journal and so i literally have the journal sitting in front of me where i have may 30th 2021 it was at 10 37 p.m like I have receipts y'all um <laughs> I have my journal here and I was manifesting three specific things I was manifesting my uh website saliamarie1243.com which is literally a thing and it has been for a while and it was crazy to kind of like go back and look at this um so I manifested my website being up is crazy to look at this i manifested um a deal uh like an ad deal um with a reputable company aligned with my business that one actually did not end up happening i mean s kind of there was other specifics that happened in there that like didn't happen but i have partnered with brands since so that one didn't come fully true but the website one came true and the car, which is what this is all about. Um, I put, I will have a 2011 or newer 
car that I will own and safely drive with a spot to park it in by August 2021. And this is in May, okay? Pay attention to those dates. This is May 30th at the end, May, so going into June. And then by August 2021 is what I wrote down. And there's a very specific process. There's multiple processes that I use to manifest. We'll probably talk about that on June 3rd um, before our guided meditation. Um, but these methods have worked for me because, baby, I manifested this damn car. Uh, <laughs> so... For a little bit of backstory on me manifesting the car. So back in 2020, so right, like the year before that, almost exactly because I think it was about like April. And that's actually when all of this started for me, when I kind of started really intensely on my spiritual journey. I would say that I've been on my spiritual journey since at least since I was 14 because that's when I kind of rejected religion and I said that I was more spiritual than religious, even though I didn't completely understand what that meant at the time. I just knew that religion wasn't for me. So I was trying to find a way to like break out of that. Um, but yeah, back in 2020, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic is kind of when my whole life like basically fell apart. And I think that's how a lot of people start their journey. That's a completely different topic, but I had to tell a little bit of that story. If you guys want to hear more about that, then definitely, um, <laughs> definitely let me know uh, if you guys want to hear about how my whole journey started. I have a YouTube video, I think, an old one um, about how I started, but there's definitely more detail that I haven't gone into because I was still kind of processing everything from that time. So basically, during the pandemic, um, I lost my car at the beginning of the pandemic. I lost my car. Um, I was going through a lot and I could not pay for it. Um, it broke down. I couldn't pay for it. I could have had somebody fix it. My twin flame, child, listen, it was a whole thing. Like I said, we're not going to get too far into that. I'm trying not to let my ADHD carry me away in this episode, but that'll be a different episode for sure. Um, so yeah, just to give some backstory, I didn't have my car because of that and I just didn't have a car because obviously I couldn't pay for it. The story with my car, I literally had to pay to have somebody pick it up. Like it broke down. I don't even know what was wrong with it. I had people looking um, looking at it, but they were trying to take advantage of me. That was a whole thing. It was a lot of stress. I was going through a lot of other things at the time. It really sucked. So I was hoping that I could just go ahead and sell it to a junkyard for parts. Um, it wasn't the newest car. I can't remember what year. It, no, wait. It was like a 2000 like 2003 Impala. They don't even make Impalas anymore, babe. But, and that's, I don't know. Ciao. I love that car. It was really wide and that's how I learned how to, uh, not wide, it was like long. That's how I learned how to parallel park in Hawaii. Because if you don't know how to parallel park in Hawaii, you're just not going to be able to go anywhere and park anywhere. So I learned how to parallel park in that class because I definitely failed it when I took uh, driver's ed in high school. Um, that's the only part of the lesson that I failed. <laughs> so I learned how in Hawaii. Everything happens for a reason. It's cosmosis. Da -da 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 -da. Anywho, so didn't have my car upset. So now fast forward to, so that was 2020, about April 2020. Fast forward to September Back then, I was still in the army. If y'all didn't know, I was in the army for 11 years. And I had a coworker who was getting ready to deploy. Um, he was getting ready to deploy, go on a deployment to another country. And he couldn't park his car on base. He didn't have anywhere to put his car. And he didn't want to pay for storage. He didn't have the money to pay for storage. Um, so he called me up one day and he was like, hey, um, you know, I heard that you lost your car. Um, I'm looking for somebody to take care of my car while I'm gone. Do you think that you could like watch it? Um, you know, you, you could use it while I'm gone. 
Um, like, I don't want you taking any like crazy road trips or anything. He was basically saying he didn't want me to like drive all the time. And I thought that was perfect because I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to do a whole lot with it anyway. Um, like, and here in part of my manifestation, little tip, write your manifestations down. It's one thing to kind of just think like, oh, I want this thing, but write it down with detail. And I'll go more into that when I talk about manifestation, maybe in the next episode or whatever episode I talk about manifestation in. Um, but I'm looking at some of the details that I wrote out and I said, it's the newest car that I've ever owned. This will allow me a better range of motion and not have to rely on others so much. Like it was crippling for me to have to call people to get a ride. Like it was so embarrassing. I hated it. And that's why I was manifesting this new car. Um, funny, I'm looking at this. It says it was right in my budget and the timing couldn't be more perfect. That is something that I literally wrote out in my manifestation Um and it's just crazy because it it happened like all of this this came true so like i said that happened in may i wrote the manifestations down in may and in september did i give a date i said oh yeah exactly august 2021 is when i said and in september I think around then is when my co my coworker contacted me. That is crazy. This shit works, you guys. <laughs> um, okay, so so it sounds perfect, right? Like this car lands in my lap. And the thing about manifestation that I also suggest is I talk a lot about set it and forget it, especially when you're using this method that I used, or you know one of these methods that I used. For your manifestations set it and forget it you set the intention and then you don't worry about it so much afterwards i think that's why i didn't even realize like the dates until i'm going back looking at everything and that's why i also think it's cool and a good idea to write it down highly recommend writing all your stuff down the angel numbers that you're seeing the messages that you're getting the an uh, um animals that you're connecting with all that um but okay so but let me tell y'all okay like i said i did not have to pay a dime um i was thinking about it and i probably would have rented it from him but if i mean he didn't bring that up he never brought that up he was just like you know take it to go get an oil change um i don't want you driving it like all the time like i said i was like no no worries like i didn't really drive that much anyway um, even when I had my car because parking was insane where I lived in Hawaii um, and it just caused me a lot of stress so I didn't really go a whole lot of places anyway so let me explain to you guys how I paid for this car in energy though S disclaimer still super grateful regardless that I was able to manifest this literally the coolest thing I've manifested other than my girlfriend because I also manifested this beautiful, healthy relationship that I'm in, which I'm completely grateful for. But yeah, I don't want this uh, story to sound like I'm not grateful for this. I just want it to be a thing where you guys are thinking not, not all things that are free are good. My dad says something like that. He says it in his old black man accent thing, but you know, um, so the day of the day that i got the car dropped off to me when i tell y'all this car was full of stuff stuff and i'm talking about like topped like to the brim if you know like how you see like clown cars or like you know um what's her name mary poppins bag how she just like pulls like crazy stuff out of it like that's what this car was y'all um it was a mazda 3 i believe I manifested a Toyota Camry, but like that's only because I used to have a Toyota Camry before I had my Impala and I loved it. And I know Toyotas are good cars, but I also loved a good Mazda. Um, and this car was really good. And it's, it's, it's important to note, it is the probably the prettiest out of all the cars that I've had. And it was definitely the newest because I think it was like a 
this was in 2020, I think it was like a 2019 or something. Isn't that crazy? I'm literally looking at the words prettiest and newest from my manifestation. It was right in my budget. And at that time, I was still not doing well. I'm trying not to use the B word, B-R-O-K-E. Um, because I'm not claiming that energy from my future or past self. Um, but I was, you know, my money wasn't the greatest, like it just wasn't in the budget for me. So it's funny that my budget was zero and the car was also zero dollars. Thank you, spirit. Um, the timing could not have been more perfect. I literally wrote that and it that's how it came out. But it was crazy, okay? It was stuffed full of stuff. It had clothes and shoes and papers and all kinds of stuff. When I tell y'all I had such a difficult time with this man, he was my coworker. I already knew he kind of uh, wasn't the most organized pal, you know, but I was not expecting how he brought it up to my house. So first, when he was coming to my house, um, the whole deal was I was going to drop him off at the airport. Um, and he had an issue getting to my house because I don't know why he couldn't use GPS, but I was trying to tell him like, okay, yeah, here's my address. And he was like, oh, well, is it here? Is it here? And I'm like, sir, like use your GPS. And he was, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the deal was. If y'all hear that in the background, that is my dog literally rubbing her back on the carpet. Are you okay, Nola? Okay. Um, hi from the dog, I guess. So maybe she was frustrated about this as well. Have you, have you heard this story, Nola? It's kind of crazy. So yeah. This man had the car packed. Like when I tell you packed, I could not see. I'm pretty sure it's illegal to drive how I was driving in this car because I could not see out the back window. There was so much stuff jammed in it. It was crazy. Like, yeah, it was it was crazy. So like uh, also he had to literally pull stuff out of the front seat so that I could sit in there. Like it was just this man. And I'm guessing, you know, he didn't have room to put his stuff in storage, which felt, you know, but it, I just wasn't expecting it. It was kind of crazy. Um, so fast forward, we're driving to the airport um, and he's, you know, I'm asking him about his deployment. He's like, OK, it's going to be about a year. Um, you know, I'll let you know when I'm coming back. And um, when we get to the airport, child why is this man still packing he's still packing at the airport like he's literally going through stuff this huge pile of clothes and I remember sending a picture to my mom after he got out of the car and I was doing like a thumbs up like in a really sarcastic way because there was just shit in the back of the car the whole thing was full of his stuff we had to take some stuff out of the car and put it underneath like my like staircase. I was just living in a tiny little apartment, so it wouldn't have fit in my stuff either. But we put it like underneath the staircase um, by my apartment, which I wasn't supposed to do anyway. And yeah, child, it was a mess. But he, this man was literally packing on the curb of the airport mind you he was also late for his flight because he didn't i don't know what the times were but like we were on the way to the airport like a half hour before his flight or something like that and i was just trying to tell myself like it's also not my business you know but like i was also trying to help so here i am helping this man pack Thank goodness the airport wasn't that packed but i was helping him literally pack his stuff we're in the army. He's like, oh, do you think I should bring this? In the army, they give you packing lists of things that you need. I'm like, bro, where is your packing list? And he's like, oh, um, I, I don't know. And I'm like, uh, so that was just frustrating. It was a little bit stressful. Um, so I helped him as much as I could. He looked crazy, disheveled, but he got on his flight eventually, I guess. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I drove the car home. And I took out some more stuff so that things could fit, but I did not end up taking everything out of it just because I did not have space for it. Um, I told him if I could, I would go through it. And I was like, why do you have so much stuff? Like why? And he was like, oh yeah, I just, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. 
It was crazy. Um, so what I did not expect as well, right? This was zero dollars, but paid for in energy. I did not expect him to harass me the entire time that I had the car, basically. Um, I remember there was one time where I had gone right down the street. I live not that far, maybe a two, three blocks away from a beach down the street from my house. And I had posted a picture of a sunset and he followed me on social media and he was like, don't go to that beach anymore. There's people who've been getting their cars broken into. Like, so basically in a way he was kind of like stalking me and like, I get it. It's fair. You know, I have your car. Um, we didn't write up any paperwork. We probably should have. Our first sergeant at the time told us to write up, well, told him to write up some paperwork. And he, I didn't even know if I was going to get the car because he was slacking on that. But child, anyway. Um, so yeah, he, I posted a picture at the beach and he was like, don't go to the beach. Like, be really careful. And he just would message me all the time talking about like, make sure you lock the doors. And I'm like, I'm not incompetent. Like, there's a reason that you left the car to me. Like, don't worry about it. Like, I got it. Um, And so that continued literally for months. Like, the whole time that I had the car, he was harassing me. So, yes, paid zero dollars, but paid all the energy in him constantly from another country, always talking to me about, oh, does it have gas? Did you do this? Did you? And it was... It was stressful. It was very stressful. So a few months before he was supposed to come back, which was about a year. I don't know if it was exactly a year, but about a year. So literally last year in 2022, um, a few months before, he somebody else messaged me from our unit, another coworker of ours. And he was like, hey, I am this person's uh, power of attorney. And... I'm I'm going to pick up his car. And I was like, what? And I was confused because I hadn't heard from the guy in a little while. So I was just really confused as to why the car was being, you know, picked up. But I was just like, okay, you know what? Whatever. And it was stressful because once you are used to having a car, like I said, I didn't use it all the time, but okay, there were certain things that I had to do. How was I going to figure out how to do without a car now? But I was like, okay, it's the man's car. I'm grateful that I got to use it for this amount of time, whatever. And again, harassed. He was harassing me. So I vacuumed the car. I put all his stuff back um, in the car from uh, the stuff that I took out. But a lot of that time, most of that stuff was in there. Trunk was full. Back seat was basically full. I didn't really have a whole bunch of people that I was like picking up cars, um, picking up people in cars or whatever. So it wasn't a problem to have all that stuff back there, but it was literally back there. Um, at, uh, during the process of me, uh, having the car, like during that time, I had gotten out of the army. And after I gave the car to his power of attorney, which is crazy, like I don't even think I verified that it was his power of attorney um, because he was supposed to give me power of attorney for the car. That would make sense, right? Because I had it. Child, none of this made sense except for the fact that it was free. <laughs> Even that doesn't really make sense. But yeah, I had gone out of the army and he was literally threatening me. He was like, um, I'm going to tell the first sergeant on you. And I didn't even bother telling him that I wasn't in the unit anymore. Um, and then it was so weird. Like his energy was crazy. Like he was like, well, um, you know, do you have my stuff? Like he he was basically accusing me of stealing his stuff. My Guns N' Roses t-shirt. Do you have that? Child, I don't know who Guns N' Roses is. Like, I don't have your t-shirt. I don't want none of your, like, no offense, none of your stanky stuff. Like, I don't want none of that. So why are you bothering me about it? And he was acting like I stole stuff. I literally have texts where he's talking about, oh, you know, you stole this shirt. I have other stuff in there. If you will just give it to me, please, I'll pay you $20. I'm like, pay me $20 for what? I don't have your stuff. Like, I just kept telling him, I don't have your stuff. Like... 
Um, and here's a text. I'm going to read a text to you that he said to me. This is after I've already returned. And let me tell you, I like sent everything to him or I gave everything back in better condition than what I found it because that's how my mama raised me. Okay. I vacuumed a car. It was crazy, like dirt, all kinds of stuff all over the place. I picked up all the change that was on the floor, put it all in one place. I cleaned out the little, um, you know, console and whatever, <clears throat> cup holders, all of that. Vacuumed it all out. This is the text that he writes me after he, I don't even know that he necessarily got his car back or I don't know when this was because I didn't know when he got back. He was not doing a good job of communicating, but he said, I hope you have fun with all my stuff. Sell it on eBay. I don't care anymore. There's the dog again. <laughs> Sorry, look, she's upset at this too. It's crazy, right, Nola? Um, <laughs> he said, I don't care anymore. A box and a trash bag. At least I got my car back. And that pissed me off because don't insinuate that I wasn't going to give you your car back. Like, I'm a good person. Why would you leave your car for free with somebody that you do not trust? That's why I was so confused when the car abruptly got taken by somebody else but i was just like divine time me baby whatever um and at that time i think i was already talking about moving to vegas too so it was just it was probably better that he just took it um but i was pissed that he was insinuating that i would have stolen his car or something like that and so I basically wrote him back and I was like, I do not have your stuff. I returned it to your power of attorney better than what it was given to me. Like, stop harassing me. And then he tried to be all buddy buddy with me. Like, yeah, that's OK. And then he was asking me, like, how I've been and like telling me about his life and oh, I'm going to move away. And I'm like, what? Like, I was so confused. And I remember talking to my girlfriend on the phone like, I hadn't moved out here to Vegas with her yet, but I remember talking to her on the phone and we were just like, what the hell is his problem? Like, what's going on? Um, and how he was just kind of like switching on and off. I was so confused. So <laughs> that is my story. Um, you know, just free, a lesson here, the word free. What energy are you paying with? If something is free, it doesn't cost anything money wise. And also being very open to things when you manifest. But what is that situation going to look like? Just be aware that it might not be how you thought. Um, it, it'll work. It might not be <laughs> what you thought. If you guys want um, more specifics on how I manifested this, like how I, the process that I actually went through to manifest this car, to manifest my website getting done, to uh, manifest uh, my girlfriend, that was one that I'm excited about sharing with y'all. I can break it all down, the different processes that I went through um, to manifest. I will probably put it in the poll on Spotify. Um, I'll run it for like a week and a half or something and see... Um, if you guys want to do that, or maybe I'll leave like a comment, like a Q&A thing for you guys to tell me what you kind of want to hear more about from this episode. Like, what should I talk about first? If you're on Spotify, definitely check that out. Also, make sure that you rate the podcast. If you love it, rate it um, and follow so that you can keep up. I think I'm going to do episodes every two weeks every week child is just too much so two weeks you know consistency looks different for everybody so i think i'm going to stick with that schedule um and then also like i said keep in mind the full moon is on june 3rd in sagittarius i really want to do something with manifestation so um definitely join patreon if you want to join us for that or look out for it on my website um closer to june 3rd and thanks for listening. I hope that this didn't stress you out too much. I hope it didn't scare you from manifesting. I just wanted to share one of the crazy stories that I had about manifesting um, something for free and what that actually might look like when you pay with energy instead of money. Okay. And like I said, I'm also really just grateful that the whole experience happened. I feel like it was like a learning thing about you know needing to have paperwork done and because it could have like I don't know what he was 
thinking that I stole or whatever, but it would have been his word against mine. I'm grateful to have used the car for that long. Spirit gave me what I needed just in a different kind of way. So gratitude, gratitude for you guys listening to this. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys next time.